morning, everybody. My name is Amanda Johnson, and I am the Superstar Director for Team Kick and Wicks, and I am so glad that you stopped by for a second to watch this video. I have gathered up some of my friends, and they are here to share with you some of their best tips when it comes to running their Cincy business. You're gonna be blown away by the creativity, by the aha moments that you're about to dive into. So, grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, because you're gonna to wanna to write this stuff down. Are you ready? Let's go. Hi, I'm Delinda, Independent Sensi Director, and my tip is, at the end of every party, figure out the commission for an essential consultant, show that to your hostess, and ask her to join your team and gift her the party. That's right, give up your PRV and gift her the party. Yes, you've just given up your commission, but you've gotten a new team member if she accepts, or he. And say that she says it's not for her. Then ask all the people at her party if they would like to have it. All the guests. Because that's exactly how I became a consultant. My daughter had a party. A brand new consultant that was trained correctly offered her the party at the end of the evening. I overheard it. My daughter said no and I asked if I could have it. Now, she'll tell you that that was one of the hardest things she'd ever done as a new consultant because it was gonna be her highest commission she had ever made. But she will also tell you that it was the best decision she made because she made so much more money in the long run by having me on her team than she did from just that one party. So you guys, ask every hostess to let you gift the party to them. If she says no, ask the guest. But let's go a step further. How about just asking every customer that places an order with you or gives you an order to submit? Figure out the commission on them and just say, hey, why don't, why don't you just join my team and you can make this back on your order. You guys, offer them the opportunity. All they can do is say no, but they may say yes. So one of the tips that I have for you having a successful business would be if you are posting anything for free on a yard sale site or one of the online yard sale pages, Craigslist, things like that, um, when people come to pick the items up from your house, make sure to put your name, your information, your business card, a sample, a catalog in with their order. That way, they know that they have somebody local who they can go to for Sensi. Another thing is to make sure that you are building relationships with your customers. So make sure that you are connecting with them on some sort of personal level, whether that's um, finding some kind of common denominator. Maybe you guys have this, kids that are the same age, kids that are in the same kind of sport. You have the same kind of hobbies, things like that. Um, and then my very last tip, which I just highly recommend to anybody, is to download Maven because that customer follow-up through Maven has been, um, for my personal business, has been one of the best, um, one of the best resources as far as connecting, following up, and really utilizing that great customer service. Hey guys, I wanna share with you what I think happens to be the key to success, and it comes down to evaluating three things. First of all, it comes down to evaluating your belief in the Sensi products. Do you believe that Sensi develops amazing products? That the products that they create for us are of quality, that people want them, that they're of worth for their value, um, that we're asking for the, for the price that they are. It, now, the second thing to evaluate is your belief in the opportunity, in the Sensi opportunity. Do you believe that people can join Sensi as a means to reach their goal for whether it is to earn some extra income? Do you believe that somebody can join and earn some extra income, whether that's every month or a yearly amount? Do you believe that they can earn incentive trips if people wanna join for free vacations? Do you believe if people join because they wanna um, make some friends, they wanna um, socialize more, do you believe that the opportunity will allow somebody to develop friendships and to develop personally? If you can answer, yes, I believe in the opportunity. Yes, I believe in these products. I love these products. The third thing to evaluate is your belief in yourself. Do you believe that you can sell, that you can share the opportunity, and that you can achieve your goals? 
We all have different styles, we all have different strengths, but when you know, when you say, yes, I believe in this, I believe in the products, I believe in the opportunity, and I believe in myself, and you'll find the method that works best for you. You'll find your voice in being able to share the sense of the opportunity because you know that your life is being changed and that it can change other people as well. So when you can answer, yes, I believe, in those three key, key things, then I know that you're gonna find the success that you need and that you want in your Sensi business. Hi there, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about customizing your fundraisers. So I feel like sometimes fundraisers um, are a little intimidating to people, maybe especially if you're just starting out, but I also feel like fundraisers can be an excellent way to build our business by meeting lots of new people, making new contacts, and also just being able to feel good about yourself and your business by being able to support local community groups and maybe individuals as well. So what I mean by customizing your fundraiser is really get to know the group that you are fundraising money for. Find out what their short-term goals are, find out what their long-term goals are, and maybe even find out why they chose the timing of their specific fundraiser. What I do with that information is really build a fundraiser that's going to fit the needs of that particular group. They feel more special and you build that trust relationship with them because they understand that you are working to do what is exactly best for them because every group may have different needs. So for example, if a group can only do a fundraiser in the middle of summer, you may not want to do a full catalog fundraiser because you'll be dealing with melting wax, maybe out in the sun, um, and steal, uh, or uh, storing things when people are on vacation, all kinds of things like that. So maybe in that particular group's need, you may want to suggest something like a Scent Circle fundraiser. If they need a little bit of quick cash and they want something fast, maybe an online fundraiser is the way to go. Maybe if it's somebody that wants to donate something to a big group, you can do something like a buddy drive. So by really getting to know your groups and finding out what their particular needs are, you can really customize that fundraiser to them. One of the big benefits of doing that is that people generally will come back the next year that they need a fundraiser or the next time that they need a fundraiser and they'll book with you again because they'll have a great experience and they'll understand that you're working for them and not just doing fundraisers the same for everybody else. So I hope that helps you a little bit. Good luck with your fundraisers. They're an excellent way to get your name for your business out there in the community and just feel good about doing it at the same time. Talk to you soon. Hi everyone, my name is Jeanette Dixon and I'm a star director from Ohio. And I was asked to, to share um, something that I think that you would find valuable, um, a tip, if you will. Um, and that is the power of personalization. And something that I really like to do is I like to get on Vistaprint and make postcards. So I'm gonna share three of them with you today. The first one is I stopped doing business cards a long time ago because I just, I don't know, I just don't like them. <laughs> so I do um, I do postcards instead of business cards. And on the cover, you'll just see, you know, why we choose Sensi. Has a picture of my family, my, t uh, my team at Reunion a couple years ago, and a um, picture of me at home office. Um, it has our name at the bottom, but if you turn it over, it has like a condensed version of our story. Um, it asks to follow us on Facebook. It gives our website and our email um, and our phone number so that people can contact us. I think this is great because it allows them um, to put it at a, like a, a person um, with your business. Um, instead of just throwing in a business card, it gives them um, a way to connect with you. Um, another thing that I do, same kind of reason, is a thank you card. Same thing, it has pictures of my family on it. it says thank you for your order, has our name, follow us on Facebook, um, email, phone, website. Right? And then on the back it's blank um, so that I can just put a postcard stamp on it, um, pop it in the mail, and um, postcard stamps are a lot cheaper than regular ones. So I can put a little scratch and sniff over here um, and just you know get that out really easy so that they can get to know me as a person. The other one I use for recruiting purposes and I carry these in my purse and it just says, how would an extra paycheck every month change your life? And then it just lists different things here, like buying groceries, paying off debt, buying a car, things like that. And then it says you're worth it. On the back, I just write little notes to people. So like maybe I'm at a restaurant and there's an, a waitress that I, I just wanna give a compliment to. I'll say, you know what? You have a great smile, you have a great person, personality, and you're very outgoing. I think you'd be great with this business. And then um, I give it to them. And if they say no, that's okay. I at least gave them a compliment and something to think about, right? Um, and it's, don't we need that a little bit more of that nowadays? Like a little bit of love, a little bit of, um, you know, patting people on the back and saying that they're worth it. 
So just a couple ideas of what I do. Thanks guys. Hey guys, so Amanda wanted me to share um, a tip with you, something that I feel like has helped me in my business. And as I was looking back over these years with my Scentsy business, I thought, you know, the one thing that I could say that I did um, that has led the most to my success, are you ready? I think that is to have a vision of what I want. Um, a goal, a dream, whatever you call it, something so solid um, that it will pull you through the hard times, it will help you find that creative streak, and it will help you overcome your failures. So, um, I wanted to, I guess basically sometimes they say it's your why, but basically you have to figure out why you are doing it. Is it for travel? Is it for money? Is it for a goal to pay off something? So for me, um, my husband graduated from graduate school years ago and we had $100,000 in student loan debt. We had 30 years to pay it off, it was going to be fine, but I just hated it. So for me, um, it wasn't necessarily for the trips, it wasn't necessarily for the recognition, it wasn't necessarily for the self-development, which has all been great side effects. But for me, what's kept me going is I needed that money because I hated the debt and I could see myself being debt-free. And, um, and paying that off. And so, it was slow. I wasn't a quick bloomer and just my business exploded. Mine was slow and steady wins the race, which is totally fine. So if that's how you are, and you're feeling a little less than amazing because you haven't earned a trip yet, it took me four years to earn my first trip, or you haven't made that promotion yet. It took me years to get to where I am, and I'm 10 years into Sensi, and I'm still not at the highest level yet. I'm still a star director. I've been a star director for seven years. So, have a goal, but it can't even just be a promotion goal. It has to be a goal, or a why, or something that's so deep inside your heart that it will truly change your life. And it might sound silly that paying off that student loan would change my life, but it did, um, because that was the strength that I needed to continue when I would hit a brick wall and I didn't know what to do, um, it, I would say, okay, well, let me find something else. Or when my recruiting would be in a slump, I would say, nope, I've got a goal. I've got to share this with more people. So if you figure out what it is deep within you, and that's going to be unique to each of you, why you're doing Sensi, what you want out of it, how your life could be different if you could achieve your goals within Sensi. It can't just be for more money and something generic like that. It can't just be for a title. Because even if you get those, guess what? It's not going to make you feel fulfilled and it's not going to fulfill your dreams and it's really not going to change your Can life. Can we talk for a couple minutes about integrating your family into your business? We're going into the busy fall selling season and I know that many of us are moms and wives and some work outside jobs and many are active in their community and their churches and there are so many things going on and only so many hours in the day and the question is how do we get it all done alone? Well, the, the beautiful thing is in most cases, we don't have to do it all alone. Whether it's your children or your spouse or a friend or a roommate or your parents, there are people who are willing and wanting to help you, but you gotta ask for it. And you have to be willing to let them help in their way, which isn't always your way. So what do I mean by that? Well, maybe the labels won't be on the catalogs perfectly straight. That's okay, I promise. No one ever died because labels weren't on a catalog straight. Um, how do you make this happen? How do you put this into action? Well, I think the most important thing to do is to sit down and have a conversation as a family, for example. I'm gonna use the example that you're gonna do this with your family. So you have a conversation with your family about, we're going into this busy fall selling season and here's what's going on and here's how I need help. And then you talk to them about ways they might want to help. Now you should be spending your time on only the things that you can do. Anyone can label catalogs. Anyone can put samples in bags and label them. Anyone can put basket parties together if you walk them through it once and teach them. Many people can enter orders even. Um, think about the things that only you can do. Those are usually the relationship type things, building relationships with your customers, with your team members, um, that kind of thing. That's the kind of thing that you are best spending your time on. But it's not just asking your family to help you. It's telling them why they want to help you and making sure they understand the reward and that it's a family reward. So for example, if I ask my kids just to contribute and contribute and contribute and contribute, they may get frustrated at some point, but I want them to understand what's in it for them. Maybe that means more time with mom. Maybe that means more family activities. Maybe that means you guys create a calendar of some things that you're going to be able to do because you've got a little extra money 
to do that. Maybe that means that you guys set a big lofty goal to take a vacation or something and a percentage of the Sensi Commission because they're helping you work is going to go towards it. Or maybe you even decide you're going to pay them for the work. There are some um, opportunities to pay your kids. You're going to want to look into that with the IRS a little more. But there are opportunities to pay them. Of course, you have to pay them realistically for the work they're putting in. I'm just going to challenge you and encourage you to realize this fall selling season that you don't have to do it alone that you have an army of help around you if you're willing to ask for it and accept it in their way and not only your way. Don't be afraid to ask for help and make it fun, make it family fun. And now I'm gonna share my little piece of advice with you. Somebody told me this very early on in my Sensi career and I've hung on to it and tied it to my own downline ever since. And that is, if you wanna be a director, Act like a director, right? You don't have to have that title next to your name in the workstation to start behaving like a director. If that's something you want for your future, look at the leadership you have in your life now. What are they doing to support their team? What kind of recognition? What are they doing for their own business? Start mimicking those actions because it's obviously made them successful, right? If you don't have great leadership in your team, that's okay. Don't let that hold you back. Think about how you want to be led, how you want to lead your downline, what things you want to put in place and start working on those things now. Like I said, it doesn't take a title next to a name on the workstation or your PWS to make you director. It's all about up here. I hope you have learned a whole lot today watching this video and learned from my friends some incredible tips for your own business. So, ready? It's time to go start putting them into action. Have a great day.